Welcome to another edition of Telescope Man. We're at the ATM SIG meeting here in uh, the month of July 2012. And today we're going to go over kind of in depth how to grind and polish a mirror. So this should be a very good episode of Telescope Man. Alright, so here we are today. We're going to try to give you a good idea of how to grind a mirror for a reflecting style telescope. So Dale is with us. Uh, Dale Sander right here. Hello, Dale. Hey. <laughs> He's going to take us through first some of the materials that you'll be using. So go ahead, Dale. Okay, well we have uh, a lot of different uh, uh, types of uh, grinding and polishing compounds here and uh, and we're going to start off with some 60 grit and this is uh, either called carborundum or uh, was it silicon carbide? Silicon carbide is what I was thinking. Yeah, using. it's also called carborundum, I don't know or maybe that's wrong but uh, anyway this is 60 grit and if you take these little grits and you uh, you line them up in a line and 60 of them fit a particular line and that's why it's called 60 grit and as you go to 80 grit, 120 grit, 220, 320, 500, and you have to take 500 of these to make the same length as you have here with 60 grit. And I've never actually measured them. But uh, that's the, uh, and then we, once you get to the 500 grit, which is really still just, you're still just grinding and chipping off glass, you, you go to a 12 micron and then 5 micron, which sort of looks to the consistency of flour. But, uh, it uh, is still a grinding compound. And then once you finish with the, uh, the five micron, then you, uh, most people go to uh, a polishing compound called uh, cerium oxide, which looks a lot like a white powder, but it's, uh, it's, it's, just, it's a little finer and it works a little differently. And uh, takes a special tool to apply this with. And uh, some people like to use the optical rouge, which is the red stuff, which used to be the only thing they had, but uh, which is just another fine powder. But uh, I've been told that you don't have to use that stuff, and it's sort of an axe shell, what I found. So I decided to stop using it. This piece, the tool looks like it has a lot of rouge on it. This was originally used as a tool to, uh, to build something, but uh, this was used as a tool too. This one's flat. And this one's got a little bit of a curve to it, as you can see here, it rocks back and forth. So uh, we're going to take and start grinding this uh, this tool. See if we can grind up all this junk. It looks like uh, dried something or other. I don't know what it is, but uh, now that is not the mirror. That's what you're going to use to grind the mirror. This is going to be the mirror, and this is going to stay as the tool. So okay. Glenn, you have an extra spoon? I could use a spoon. Yes. Yeah. Well, you. <laughs> and I can use some of the towels there. Thank you. Oh, it's in here. There we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was just thinking it was in here. Okay. Here. Now, these spoons, you don't want to go from one to the other because if you get one of these grits right here in the 80 grit, then the 80 grit is essentially trashed because you're, you know, uh, you're going to be making big gouges in your, your, your 80, you know, pits. These, you wind up with little tiny pits in the glass, and the smaller the pits get, the, you know, the better off, off you are. So, so uh, generally I don't try to, you know, if you were to go from light to, from small to big, it would be fine, but going from big to small, which is the way you got to go, it doesn't work very well. So, any, anyway, so we've got, uh, we've got the tool on top of this turntable here with the uh, grit and we're going to uh, just and that's the standard polishing stroke, I mean the standard grinding stroke, it's also a polishing stroke for almost the entire operation of this uh, of the, this, uh, this this mirror grinding and polishing 
each time you start, you, you turn one this way and one the other way. So we're going to go this way and we'll go this way on this one. And it's the same thing. You want to go back and forth with your pressure right here in the middle of the tool. Looks like the grit coming off of there. See if we can get all that grit off there, yeah. This is not an approved tool uh, technique. Stroke. <laughs> stroke, yes. <laughs> approved tool stroke. But it's going to be fine. Okay. So, put a little bit of this on and a little bit of water. And for starting out, you, you want to put the, the mirror, the tool on the bottom and the mirror on top and you want to use a special stroke that's used just for the beginning operation where you're you're putting a curve into this uh, this flat surface here. It's flat and what we want to do is we want to hollow this out. We're not quite sure where we want it hollowed out at some point. We'll have to decide. And Because the uh, people say, they always ask me, well, what F ratio do you, is you know the best for the mirror? And I always come back to them and say, well, how long do you want the telescope? Because the longer the F ratio, the longer the telescope. And what's they say, the, I don't know what. What's the trade-off? What what's do you the trade -off? Yeah, what do you get with an F10 versus an F1? Well, with an F10, say 10 inch, you get a scope this high, and it's not going to work very good for a five-year-old, because <laughs> he isn't going to be able to, get, to look through it unless it's on a ladder. Right. That's 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 one of the basic things you get. Okay. Uh, with with longer focal ratios, you get uh, different uh, you get different quality of image for different things. Generally, people feel the longer the scope, the better planetary viewing. So, looking at Mars and Jupiter and Saturn works better with a longer scope. Uh, uh, some die, and if you get too short a focal ratio, then uh, you get uh, some image distortion on the edges that. Uh, you don't have anything that you can do with it. And you can't correct it, you either. You can't correct it. I mean, if you can go down to about an F4, okay. and then an F4 on certain 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 eyepieces, you're going to have to have what's called a coma corrector. Is, it, is, it, is that right. the correct term? And uh, that uh, uh, is very expensive, and another added you know weight on top of the scope. So you're you know you might pay 300 bucks just for that tr just for that corrector, you know. So, so most people wind up with a F ratio of somewhere between 4.5 and about 8. That's where you usually go. Okay. And uh, with smaller scopes, say you know a six, a, a four or six inch mirror, you can go up to F8 and still have a you know fairly short scope. The short, the length of the scope is still sort of I I I would consider it the most important factor because it's it's going to be with you every time you look at the scope. You're going to have to deal with the height of the scope. So. Right. So. Uh, so do you have any other questions? Do we know what curvature the F factors are related to? I mean, is, you get, you're going F one, two, three, four, but what uh, curvature the, difference is that? The well, the 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 F ratio is a uh, uh, is a factor of the focal length versus the uh, width of the mirror. So if this is but six inches across and it's a it's an it, it's a uh, an F ten, that would be sixty inches. Okay, but but you were talking about curvature. That's it's, that's going to be relative. To yeah, it. and but are you measuring that curvature? You are used to the you know ha having tools to do this. We actually use a a a, a much more uh, primitive Primitive. approach, as long as you know we don't have you know very you know we don't have much in the way of tools. But but it's very accurate. We just point it towards the sun, and see at what point the image. Uh, We'll so focus. you kind of sundial in you your, sundial your in. curvature and instead of measure it by the... Um, yeah, and, and, and when you're uh, working with a, uh, uh, a finished mirror, it's really e easy to do. With a, uh, I, a, with a mirror that's in grinding, you take and you clean it off and you wet it with water. Mm -hmm. And then the water will, then the sun will reflect off the water. Right. And it doesn't give it sharp an image, but it gives you within an inch or so of where it's going to be, which is close enough because we don't usually, you know, we're not trying to, to work where we're actually grinding something. Something it has to be an exact okay. F ratio. We're just uh, like I said, we're more concerned about the length of the other scope than anything else. So if you get within an inch or so, you're close enough. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Okay. Now the the stroke, which is called a a roughing out stroke, you put the tool on the bottom and the uh, mirror on top. Generally, the tool is bigger than the uh, mirror, but in this case, it, it doesn't really matter. But the, 
This is a nice size. I think it's a six inch uh, blank. And and the uh, the uh, stroke is just on the edge, and it's uh, pretty boring. You just take and you push right here, and you just go back and forth. When I, I was working on uh, a uh, a demonstration, John Dobson came by once and he said, "Well, you always have to make sure that the that the grits are perfectly even before you start." And he went on about ten minutes about that. <laughs> so okay. it's very important. So if you want to do it the way John Dobson says, it's very important that everything is perfectly even, and you want to make sure you have some water because the water acts as a lubricant. And what actually happens here is. The grits rotate on the top of the glass and chip pieces of glass off. And you're chipping pieces of glass off the top and the bottom. Now, the, the piece that's on top is the one that's going to be hollowed out and turned into a uh, concave shape. And the one on, on, the, bo on the bottom will be the uh, convex. convex shape. Yeah, that's right. It'd be, it's going to be out. Okay. So, for, m for most operations that you're going to start after you do this, you want to keep turning them o over. You have, you know, for 5, 10, 15 minutes, you'll have one on top, the other one on the bottom, and you turn them around. Uh, once you get to the proper curve or F ratio. So what we, but what we write, what what we have right now is a perfectly flat piece of glass. So because of that, we're going to just keep this on top for the entire operation until we get to the correct F ratio. So I've been talking way too much. I need someone to jump in here and uh, and pick up here where I left off. Grinding? Grinding, yeah. Would you like to do, do some ground grinding? I'll get you right up really fast so you're going to have to push, push the grid on real hard. And, and you want it about halfway so the edge is about yeah, right. halfway. Right? Right there. Yes. Okay, okay in, in case you don't see what he's doing. He's pressing down on the middle of the tool heavily and he's not using a W stroke. He's just going back and forth trying to get that a little bit of that mirror ground out. The W stroke will come in later. Get some spray some more water on it and then we'll just clean it off. And uh, you can go ahead and clean that off and then throw some more grit grit on some more water and then just flip right up. Okay. Well, here's a trash can. I forgot paper towel, but uh, Alan was able to come up with some. So. <laughs> I don't know how much you usually put on. Well, you know, if you, the more you put on, the, the, the longer you can work. So. Did you say turn it off or on? No. Oh, you, did no. you turn it off? No, I was, uh, no I was just saying that you, 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 this is too bad. <laughs> sort of dull now and the outside of the mirror is polished a you little bit. I mean, it's still polished from the original polish. You just need a straight edge? Is that all yeah. You? I, I straight that's, edge across it and you need to take yeah. a piece of paper. We, we, we will get a straight edge and, and uh, do it correctly here. So what does this machine look like? You can do I this in a bucket of water it. too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just never got used to using a bucket of water. If you feel this with your hand, you can see that it's just rough right there. The there you go. Yeah. That was just rough in there. And you, yeah, and you and can kind of feel it. And, and, and you can see it too. Yeah. You can see that there's a ring right here. Let's see if we can tell a difference with a straight edge. We need, we need a piece of paper. Okay, let's see if we got it here with a straight edge. See if we're, yep, see? See, you try to go here. We want to see it stops right there and right there, you see. So we have we've hollowed out that much of the mirror just in the last uh, 15 we, minutes. We didn't 
didn't yeah, even they, know what we were doing. Yeah, you know? we weren't working that hard at it. <laughs> Yeah. It goes pretty fast. It's yeah. amazingly fast. Yeah. Okay. So that's the first step. Okay. Let's go ahead and take the first step. I don't know where the screen came from. Just go ahead and keep it. It's a machine square. Just yeah, leave it over there. Okay. Now I'll just go on to the next step because the next step is the same. It's the same for almost all the operations that you're going to use for however many hours it's going to take to finish this thing. We will, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just say that we have finished the, uh, the 60 grit, we'll go on to 80 grit, which, 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 which will be the next step here. Don't you need to clean off that tool real clean thing? Well, we would, but we're just going to go ahead and okay. just do a demo, yes. You, 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 you would need to, between grits, you have to get every little bit of grit gone. All these bits of 60 grit have to be taken away and cleaned. And you want to take it outside and hose it all down. But since it's we're just going to do a little demo here, we aren't, we aren't going to do that. We're just going to wipe it off here. And we're just going to say that we took it outside and washed it off. But if you were, because we actually have to, have to go back and finish this, this thing, because we actually haven't you know, finished the 60 grit yet. But I'll just show you, just real quick, the next, the next step, which is the same for the 80, the 120, all the way up to the polishing. It's actually the same. Until you get to the very end, and then there's a then, 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 then there's different strokes that you use. So, so we're going to say, okay, now we've got this thing hollowed out. We've taken it out in the sun. We've looked at it, and it's got, it's, it's at about an F7, which is going to be fine. So that should be the tool. That's yeah, the tool. yeah, that that's the tool. I'm sorry, I've got yeah. I've got them backwards now. Because we want to turn these around. We want to put. Let's start now with the with the mirror on the bottom and the tool on top. And you can tell that's at an F7 by the size of that uh, curvature. You I if guess, guesstimation. Just guesstimation. Yeah. With given another couple of hours of work, it would be F7. <laughs> 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 okay. And let's clean this uh, spoon off. Or do you want to use a different spoon? I need to actually make sure my hands are clean because I don't want to get any, any bricks mm -hmm. in the. Uh, no, really. Uh, really or do we? Where'd that spoon come from? You actually get it as an S7, and then you can yeah, you to get spoon, it off the edge. Yeah, you want a new spoon? Yeah. You want a new spoon? No, I can't. Yeah, we got a whole box. Really? Got, you got a whole box of spoons. Oh, whole okay. box of spoons. Okay. Well, we'll leave that spoon there. We'll start with a new spoon. A new spoon is perfect. Yes, we should have a new spoon. Okay. 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 Now we've got we've got 80 grit, and uh, same thing you. Take and you just spread a small layer, and since the uh, the uh, the grit is a smaller grit, each piece of grit is smaller. The uh, when it chips off the glass, it chips a smaller bit of glass off, and leaves a uh, a smoother finish. So, and now we're going to use the what's called the standard stroke, and it's just end over end. Same thing. You want to keep your weight right in the in the middle, and you want to you want to I think it's, I think it's called a one third stroke. So you want about yeah. one 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 third. About what would that be? About inch and a half or so. Yeah. A little oh, bit. One third. Remember, it is one yeah. third. One third. Yeah. And here you want to keep weight down. Press as hard as you can, and you'll like I said before. On this stroke, every 15 minutes or so, you'll turn them all over. You put the tool on the bottom and the mirror on top. If you don't, you'll be sorry because you'll change the F ratio. You'll wind up with a really short scope or a really long one, and you'd rather keep it you know, the same size. And as you can hear, it's not making as much noise now as it was. 
And what that means is that the grips are, are smaller. They're starting to get down to a, like a 120 size instead of an 80 size. And eventually, uh, if, you keep, if you keep working it, it'll just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That's not really doing much. So once it starts making, you know, when it stops making a lot of noise, you're better off just to stop working. Now, so when you keep this stroke all the way through to the, the new polishing, working on even to the polishing, you can do this stroke the whole stroke, the whole the the whole, the whole, whole rest of the way. I've tried different ones, mm -hmm. and, and the, 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 the new literature says this is the way to go. Okay. And that's what Glenn did, and Glenn did his work. So, so and I, I was doing and the mine w didn't. W stroke. Yeah, that's what I did, and, and uh, uh, it sometimes works, but this works better. The W stroke will tend to turn the edge down. Yeah, because you're, you're going outside. You're going outside. And you want to, the, 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 the way that's accepted now is use this, then work on the edge at the very last. Zero W. Yeah, I mean, if you're good, and you don't go too far out, it works. It works, but this works better and it keeps the edge from yeah, turning. You don't have to worry about the turn down edge too. Yeah, yeah, it's less likely. You, know, you can still turn the yeah, edge. Yeah, you know. if you're going too far off. Right. If you go too far, you know, too, too long a stroke, yeah. back and forth, that's going to like, you're doing this, you know, yeah, yeah. it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this is good. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's going to keep going. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Uh, you you want to mention that you, you need to keep a bevel. A bevel, yes. Near, near. You may good. want to talk about that. Yeah, we need to talk right. about that. And uh, this bottom piece is beveled, and this top one is beveled a little bit. And the edge is a little sharp. So is there anybody else that wants to try the standard stroke? The standard stroke. Alan, I know you. I, 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 I know you, you. You need to try, and then, then we'll talk about the importance of a bevel, because if you don't bevel the stuff, it will cause you problems. It will chip, and. Have uh, You need to start all over again. It won't be pretty. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I'll get you started. Started here. Okay. There you go. Okay, go ahead and uh, find, uh, print it down, and then turn them over so you can so you can, you can get get used to the process of how you do okay, it. Okay, so now this. Make sure you got lots of water, and uh, and then this is a one third stroke. One third stroke. It's called one one third end over end. Same thing. Counter yeah. mini rotate, walking around the barrel. Because if this stuff gets in there, then that's trash, so it's no good. <laughs> Go ahead, Dale. Okay. We're going to bevel the edge, and we have a uh, diamond file. Let's see how that is working. Yeah? Is it working? I've never tried a diamond file before. What I usually use is a, uh, a stone that you, you would use for sharpening a, uh, a knife. And you want to make sure the stone stays wet. You want to keep the mirror wet because you're working uh, with powdered glass. So you want to make sure the powdered glass uh, stays in a mixture of water so it doesn't get into the air so you don't bleed it. Always keep everything wet. You could do this in a little trough uh, yeah. underwater. You could, yeah. You could do it underwater. So that's basically the technique, and you, you want to. There's two reasons you want to make sure you have a bevel, and both are very important. One is because the edge is very sharp, and uh, you can cut yourself. But uh, as far as the mirror is concerned, the most important part of the uh, mirror making process, process is. So let me have this uh, tool right here, and I'll demonstrate that. When you are working with this, say you're, you're working with a tool and the mirror, and let's, let's say you're working with a larger piece of glass, but the larger piece of glass is even more important. Each time you go back and forth between wets when you're putting the tool on and off, if you hit the edge just a little tiny bit and it's really sharp, it's not like a big hunk out, a large hunk of glass will just pop right out. And if you got a, a bevel in it, it doesn't do that. The, 40, the 45 degree angle on the edge keeps that from breaking when you're taking the tool on and off, which you do a thousand times in the process. So, so uh, let me make it on a thousand, but, but several others for sure. 
And uh, so the bevel is very important. So you want to bevel both ends of the glass. You get to get the other side of the glass. You want to bevel just because you don't want to get shut. And once you bevel it, it's going to be fine. But you actually, when you're starting out, you want it to be a bevel larger. Yeah. yeah. And here's a piece that actually has the that's, bevel on it. You can see it in red. That, that bevel yeah. is about a sixteenth of. You go. Be sure to hang on to it, Glenn. I am. I, I, I am just pointing. Okay. That edge is about a sixteenth of an inch. Yeah. Maybe an eighth, and you want to start out with probably a little more than an eighth of an inch because what happens is, as you grind the the the, the mirror, it actually gets thinner. So you'll start off with enough, and then you'll get down, and be, the bevel will get less and less and less. So you want to start off with probably about three sixteenths of an inch bevel on it. Mm -hmm. Would you say that's 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 yeah, about that's right? What I did. Because I started off with a sixteenth, and I kept having to go back and do yeah. more bevel. You know, I just like I better to do more bevel. Mm -hmm. You're more mind. bevel too. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. yeah, without that bevel. It can Razor sharp too. It's razor yeah. sharp and, and it's it's just super sensitive. You just barely touch it, and it just Chip. just Chip. big chunk, big chunk of glass that comes yeah. out. And then you're you're stuck with a chunk of glass gone from your mirror. Yeah. And every time you look at that mirror for the rest of your life, you go, "See that <laughs> chunk that's gone? <laughs> I did that. Well, I did that. I didn't <laughs> so so this should probably be done before you ever start grinding. That's the first thing. Yes, you that's do. the first thing that you do. You yeah. put a bevel on the tool, and on the, the the mirror itself. I yeah. think it's going to be the mirror. Yeah, because you, cause you, you don't want to chip the tool, you don't want to chip the uh, the mirror, and you uh, don't want to hurt yourself on, on the sharp edge. And oh, anytime yeah. you work with glass, any grinding process, coloring process, you always work with water. You want to keep the glass in, in that it keep the glass set, 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 in the water. So we have we have ground part of the mirror and let's say that we had it completely ground out all the way to the edge and we wanted to know uh, if it was time to go to the next grip. Okay. So how do you know when to go to the next grip? The laser. The laser. No, I don't know. Does that the laser work? I don't know. Let's check. We, we can try the laser. I've never heard of the laser. You've never heard of the laser at that point. I've never heard of the laser. Probably seen yet. But hey, let's play with the laser. But the laser might work. I don't know. Let's try it and see. But uh, I will use the, the technique I'll show you first is the one that I know that works. Okay. 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 You take a, uh, a, a standard scope eyepiece or a, a high power uh, a magnifying glass and you, you focus on the mirror. And I usually, I talk to the start, I look, I, look, I look at the edge first when I get the edge in focus. And then I move across to the tips. And what you want to do is, if you say you, you had been working at 80 grit and then you went and worked at 60 grit, you want to look at the surface and see if all the pits are the same size. There's some large ones and some small ones, then you know you're not finished yet. See, we started this on 60 and then we went on 80, and I'm seeing both a lot of small pits and large pits. And that means we're not quite ready yet. Now, if you, if, if you say, well, it's close enough, I'll just go on to the next one, eventually you will get rid of those larger pits, but it takes longer. So you wait, wind up with more time. grinding than you would have. So you want to get, you want to get it down to so all of this, they're all uniform. Okay? So that's the uh, technique that I do. You, you got a, uh, you have a loop. Okay, well that's the, uh, you can try that and see if that... Yeah, you know, this is the 10. What is, what do you have there? I don't know how much power it, 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 it is when used backwards, but I can take a look at it and we have to compare. I'm interested in looking at it. It's, it's a 40 millimeter. So they're inspecting they, they, they the, the me. mirror to, to see no, see the pits that are in the mirror from the grinding and to see well, okay, if uh, they're all small yeah, see, see, yeah, they are or all one size. Yeah, I see some that are probably all the same, the same size. Yeah, that's not uh, good. Because if they're not, that yeah, means that step that. in the grinding the has not been completed. So you continue that. grinding that, that with the same uh, size yeah, grit. Yeah. Until all the pits were the same size. What is that? Yeah. Which is, a, which is a, an actual tool for this. Yeah. That's, well, that's an actual tool that you, you should have, but if you, what, you don't have the tool, you probably have an eye tool. So and I can go to a high level. Okay. The uh, next step now is, is the polishing step, and we're going to have the yeah, small mirror ready to uh, be polished. And uh, 
I've got a larger polishing tool here, and uh, this one is for a, a larger mirror. And uh, you can use a wood or even just a piece of glass. We work for this one. What I think we probably do, we'll take it and uh, put pitch on top here, like like we have here, and put it on top of this tool here. And for the uh, polishing step, you use a. Uh, Serine oxide, which we have right here, and uh, water. It, it's a lot like grinding, but it's a whole separate operation. We don't actually have the polishing tool ready for this, but I can just do a quick, quick demo of what it would look, what it, what it would be like. We'd have a tool this size here with pitch on top that looks like this, this one here, which was, which was made for a 10 inch here, and we'll we'll pour the pitch on top of here, and we'll put grooves in the top that uh, are, are channels that allow each square to have some give to it. And so you'll have pitch on top of here and we'll take and we'll spray water on here. And we'll take uh, serine oxide, which is just a powder, and we'll uh, take small amounts of serine oxide. I'll take another spoon. You got another type of spoon? Yeah, that's good. We'll take a, a spoon and we'll put a little serine oxide oh. on top here. We'll just go ahead and get that off. To make sure we maintain separation oh, okay. between our grit right. and our polishing. Uh, I'm, I'm with you. Yeah, we don't, you don't want to ever have polishing and grinding going going on in the same place. So, but but the actual operation is about the same. So, this is not grit. This is a polishing compound called serum oxide. And uh, so we will wind up with with a tool that's like this on this surface here, and it will be the same operation that we were using before, which is just moving back and forth, and turning and turning back and forth with a uh, polishing compound on it. And it, it, it will uh, probably take maybe an hour or so of polishing, maybe small. And uh, the interesting thing is, it's exactly the same stroke as a grinding stroke is. It's exactly the same stroke. Back and forth, turning, turning. You know, uh, but instead of a hard surface like this, you have a surface here which on its own breaks them off. This is pitch, and it's it's uh, it's 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 when it's when it's that's sort of old. When it, when, when it when it's fresh, it has a lot of give to it, and it doesn't break too too too. And it doesn't break as, as much as what that 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 would. And because of the give, the pit the cerium oxide bonds into the surface. So, whereas with the tool, when we had, you know, the tool, which is, which is what this is here, is a tool, the, uh, when you had grit on the tool, it rolls on the surface. And the grit is rolling back and back and forth and grinding away the tool and grinding away the, uh, the uh, mirror. But with the, uh, the, the polishing tool, the, the, uh, the serum, oxide bonds into the surface and then glides across the uh, surface and as, it, as and it doesn't roll it glides and 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 and, and sort of I, what's I the word there, there there's a word for that where it just it just it just smooths it's, yeah and you're talking about a galling process yeah it, it's just a different it's not a rolling process it's a something else we'll come up with a word here later but that in metal it's called galling. Gall, 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 but I don't gall. know what it's called. Do you have a do you have an operation for that? A, a name for that? Uh, but yeah, yeah, you have, you have, you have both grinding and and polishing. Right, but it's more of a gliding operation. You, you glide yeah. across and, and and just just right. You're 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 more polishing the grooves instead of making new ones. Yeah, yeah, That's you're, you're polishing it. So you're floating that actually. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. You're floating, you're floating it down. And so 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 the. It, the powder it isn't rolling; it's just gliding across, and it just glides the surface, and you wind up with a very polished surface. And 
we don't have a, a demonstration tool for that yet because we're not we're not quite there yet. No, I, I brought mine. If you, you want to do you it, you bring then, yours? Yeah, I can bring it in. I got the tool and I got the mirror. Okay. Well, we could do the we we could do the we could do a, a demonstration on it. Uh, uh, I had not had tinker. Okay. okay. They're uh, uh, right uh, now. They're using yeah, a laser yeah, looking through this now, ten now, inch mirror that Glenn Fitzgerald's been yeah, working on, and he's down to the polishing stage now. It's a beautiful mirror. And he can tell with the laser that the edges still need to be polished a little bit because the laser gets a little fuzzy when it gets around the edge. It's real sharp down through the middle, but when you get right out to the edge, it gets a little fuzzy. So it needs a little more polishing. And we're going to demonstrate that polishing technique on an actual mirror that Glenn has been working on. It's a 10 inch mirror. This tool over here is uh, made with pitch and you can google uh, up uh, mirror grinding pitch tool and there's instructions on how to make this tool yourself from a block of wood and pitch and how to cut the grooves in the pitch and then use that tool to polish the mirror. You remember when we were doing this blank over here we were just using another piece of glass but now we're actually using a special tool uh, that's made out of wood and pitch to actually polish the mirror.